my garden layout. I'll probably check. Here I am, kids. <laughs> Just fooling around this morning, having some fun. But uh, there you go. Settle you down. I am. I'm planting. I'm planting. I'm starting the garden. There's always something going on on Grandpa's farm. A place where you're always welcome. Come on, Lily. Let's go feed. Getting. Get, I'm gonna have to grow in buckets and containers, but I'm getting my tomatoes started this week. Um, I want to get a jump on them, and so I have a whole bunch of these. Uh, these little mini greenhouse starter kits. These are the ba it has a base like this. It has this, and it's got a dome that goes over top of that. Um, I got a bunch of those getting ready to go here, and um, kind of excited about it. Kind of excited about it. So I'm starting my seed. So far, I have in the uh, in the container. So far, I have got risen traub which is a, uh, a salad type uh, tomato. Um, not great big huge slicer, not a little cherry, kind of in between those two. Kind of excited about that one, Reisentraub. It's, it's a German style tomato. And of course I am predominantly German. So I have a black cherry tomato. Now this is a little, uh, you know, cherry size. Um, but it should be started six to 10 weeks before last frost. And that's where we're at. We're about 10 weeks uh, till last frost. And then I got black beauties. I'm going to try some black beauties and see how they do. And um, then I'm going to put in some yellow pears, some Hartman's yellow gooseberry, and some Dr. Weichi's. Weichi, Weichi, whatever that is. And so... Pretty simple deal. I take my little envelope. I take my little tiny, my little tiny pen knife. Because I don't want, I don't want to, I want to be able to keep them in the envelopes and keep them secure. So I try not to open up the complete envelope. And I try to open it in such a way that I can still read everything that's on there. I have a bad habit of being just rough with stuff i mean you know i'm just a big guy and i'm rough i'm i'm kind of like you know a big old ox in a china store okay so i make it i slice about halfway maybe not quite halfway tap it open a little bit and then and then what i'll do is i'll i'll go ahead and i'll try to just tap out a couple seeds come on there's one, I want four. There we go, perfect, four. And then I'll take those four, and I'll, I'll separate them into two, two and two. I, I get my finger wet so that I can pick up two, and I drop them down a little hole. And down a little hole they go. A little moisture, got two seeds. And down the little hole. Whoop! Come on, get down in there. There we go. Down the little hole they go. Now these holes, uh, this, th these, uh, these little kits came with these little, little teeny tiny tools. Uh, but this is a good dimple stick for making a hole. So I've been using this to pop my holes in there, and then I'm using the little tiny spade to, uh, to kind of dress up the hole. I, you know, tuck it in a little bit and make sure that they're you know, good and and in there. And then once I've gotten that complete, let me put some light on me so you can see me. There we go. Um, then I go ahead and label them. So in this case, I have to label these uh, Y and then pear, just Y for yellow. And then pear. Unfortunately, my Sharpie is a great big fat one. And so it's hard to make little labels, but there we go. So yellow pear, and just slide that in there. I'm, I'm actually seeding two, I'm starting two plants of each type once a week for 10 weeks. How's that for, for math? And that should keep me inundated in tomatoes, uh, which is the only thing that I am starting ahead of time. Everything else is, um, I'm waiting until we, the ground is thawed outside and I can just have dirt in buckets and 
and do that that way. Whoop, one, two, oh wow, these are much bigger tomato seeds. Come on, three, one more, whoop, five. All right, let's put, put these, put some back. A tomato seed on me, where'd that come from? Uh, that's two there stuck together, so I'll put that one back too. Don't want to, don't want to waste seeds, man. Don't want to waste seeds. So, all right. So we get a little moisture on the finger. We drop them right down the hole. A little moisture on the finger. I'm not sure if you guys how well this is doing with this camera. I think I may be getting you guys a little too close. You may not be able to see it. And if so, I apologize. This camera does not have a screen. So it's hard for me to see what is on it and what's not on it, but yeah, we'll see. Okay, so that was Dr. Weichie's. I'm just going to put Weichie's. W-Y-C-H-E. W-Y-C-H-E. Weichie. Weichie. There we go. And last but not least, the Hartman's Yellow Gooseberry Tomato. A gooseberry, I've not had these before, so this will be interesting. I like to experiment with tomatoes, try different varieties. Once I have my own place and have more room, I'll be able to uh, really focus on a whole lot of the ones I like. Because I do have some varieties that I prefer over others. Some of these I've not had before. The Dr. White cheese, I've not had them before. Not not that I can remember. I mean, you know, you farm for as many years as... Is this an empty package? Oh, no, they're in there. Wow, they're teeny tiny. All right. One. There's three. Come on, one more. Four. Perfect. All right, got the tomatoes on there, drop them in the hole. Got the tomato seeds on there, drop them in the hole. Take my little handy tool. We'll go ahead and pack that down, cover them over. <laughs> oh man, these little tools are funny, huh? I think they're hysterical. <sighs> okay, so... I'm just going to tie, uh, why, why goose on this? Why and goose? Yellow gooseberry. And there we go. And that's it. That's in there. And now this is going to go into a base. Uh, it's going to go into the kitchen. And, um... That's going to be it for a week. Next week, I will, uh, I'll do this again. And I'll continue doing this every week until I have them all, um, all started. And um, hopefully we'll have a banner tomato season. I don't know about you guys, but to me, one of my true joys of the garden is that I get to go out and pluck tomatoes right off the vine and eat them. Sorry, guys, just what I do. Okay, so here's what I do. I take all the packets that I'm seeding, I put them together, fold, bend it over, and I get one of these little metal clips, put the little clip on there, and now none of the seeds can come out, and they're all combined in one area. So I know exactly where they are. I can grab them easily to do that again next week and uh, put my tools and my stuff away here. I have them stored in a little plow cabinet drawer next to my next to my desk. And that's it. That's that's gonna be my garden activities for the week, huh? Hang my little pen knife back up there again. And uh there you go. Yeah. So I am all set this week. Got my old little garden started. Now when you live in a little apartment and you don't have a homestead that you wanna have, this is what you gotta do. You gotta start small and uh Start with those little pleasures in life. And, uh, talking about pleasures in life. A little cup of ambition there. 
Um, but no, actually, that's another direction. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk to people about. Boy, did I even brush my hair this morning? I did not. Wow, I look like a mess. Um, <laughs> got up first thing this morning, started doing a video, and I haven't even brushed my hair. Lovely. Um, no, I, I want to talk about simple pleasures. Simple pleasures. Um, cup of coffee, you know. This did wonders for my attitude, my experience, my soul. Wonders. Playing a little bit in the dirt. Planting some seeds. You've got to be an optimist. If you're going to garden, you've got to be an optimist. No, the, uh, the, no pessimist ever planted a seed with the hopes that something is going to grow. Um, and, and it's weird how in our lives, in our existence, uh, these sorts of uh, ideas trickle down and apply in different areas. As an example, and this may seem a little morbid, and it is, but uh, my sister, who is, uh, oh, I don't know, 13, 13, 14 years older than me, um, contacted me. Uh, I am the only family member near our family plot, if you will, at the cemetery. Um, we own uh, eight, uh, eight sites at a little cemetery that's down the road from our old family property. And um, anyhow, she wanted me to contact the local stone cutter guy and see about her headstone. And um, I was like, okay, I, I guess I can do that. She was just, you know, she's, her husband died years ago. He's buried in New York. She's not going to be buried with him. She's going to be buried here with the family. Um, and uh, she wanted a headstone, and she so she wants to make her, she's just taking care of her final arrangements, you know? And you get you get up in the years, you start thinking about getting those things organized, you know? Saves the burden on the family, and it does, it really does. Anyhow, so I got to thinking about my own demise and some stuff, and I started looking through at, at headstones, and I found the coolest thing, benches. Uh, a stone, you know, like a headstone, but but it's a bench uh, that'll seat a couple people. Um, and, you know, it, so it's got all the, you know, my name and born and died and all that kind of information in it. There's room in there for me to inscribe some sort of little, you know, message like, you know, kiss my butt or, you know, life was a gas and, you know, whatever I decide I want to put on the headstone, I, I may have some fun with that. But, yep. Yeah. Telephone call. I'm gonna have to edit this out. So I'm looking at at these uh, these benches, and I thought, what a great idea. Well, the point, of, what I'm trying to get around to is, my thinking is that uh, if there's a bench there at our family plot, then when people come to visit us, they have some place to sit, and uh, you know they can they can be comfortable, and so maybe they might spend a little bit more time and think a little bit more about us. I mean, that's all you can really ask for in the afterlife is that people think about you or, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and so I'm with my friend, Charlie, we're, we're running an errand and uh, he goes, yeah, and just think you. So the, you'll have the best view in the house though. You'll be laying in the ground, looking up at their butts. <laughs> true, true, I guess. But, you know, I hope that my children and my grandchildren and great grandchildren, you know, uh, would be comfortable. With, they would come to the cemetery and have a comfortable place to sit, and visit and and talk. I know that I go down and visit with my parents. Um, obviously, one-sided conversation. Thank God, it's a, I'd be scared to death, man. What my mom, my mom would rip me. A, never mind. <laughs> I would get an earful from my mother if she was alive right now. Uh, I am sure of that. So. And my dad would just look at me and shake his head. So, uh, but you know, I, I go down and I visit with them. And and you know, as as my parents, I guess that's about all they could really expect out of us at this point. You know, uh, I hope, wish my sisters lived closer so they could visit more often. But if I can put a bench there and make it comfortable for and for the other people, you know, all all of our neighbors, um, you know, their their loved ones, if they're tired or feeble or not in great shape or obese like me, you know, let them sit down and take a, take a breather when, while they visit, you know? So I don't know. Interesting, interesting thing. So anyhow, this, uh, <laughs> I digress. So this, this planting these seeds today, 
this has been my fun for the day. Uh, and and it, I, the restorative power of gardening, the restorative power of gardening. The, not only is the food that I'm going to be growing good for me inside, but the act of planting and starting seeds and having that optimism about the future, well, that's just priceless. And, and believe me, that does more for my health than any grade quality of, of prolative foods. And if you're, if you're not a gardener, then you're missing out on that. And you should. You should just start some, even if it dies, okay? Even if I start these seeds and they die. It, that doesn't negate the joy uh, and the excitement that I felt by planting some seeds today and looking forward to the future. So many little tiny joys in life. That's going to be the focus of this year for me is uh, enjoying and, and uh, acknowledging simple pleasures. And another simple pleasure is you guys, my friends. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please do like and subscribe. And uh, as I like to say at the end of all my videos, be good, be careful, take good care of one another, and we'll have more for you in the near future. Bye. Well, how about them toad suckers? Ain't they sappy? Sucking them toads all shore, make them happy. Hug them, mug of toad suckers way down south. Sticking them sucky toads in their mouth. I be a toad sucker, knowing a duck it. You just find an old toad and you rare back and suck it. Folks, you have a good day. Bye.